Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We've got an old Big 12 rivalry on Saturday as number six, Oklahoma, takes on Nebraska in Lincoln. But guys, the old rivalry storyline, well, that's not even the biggest storyline on Saturday. Yes, these two teams have met 87 times. They're meeting for the 88th on Saturday, but this is Oklahoma's first true test under Brent Venables and this will be Nebraska's first game after firing Scott Frost. Those are the big storylines heading into Saturday. And this game, guys, might be a little bit closer than some expect. So welcome back again to the Gridiron Expert, guys. Ready to break down everything you need to know for Oklahoma and Nebraska. And, of course, sharing our official prediction for this game. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country, being out over 80% of the national analysts every single year and already hitting over 65% of our bets this season. So do not miss out on that. Go sign up for those today and become a part of our GE Nation and what we are building here at the Gridiron Expert. So you take a look, guys, Oklahoma and Nebraska. This was going to be a fun and exciting game regardless, but just the extra storylines makes this an even bigger game, in my opinion. Uh, first off, old Big 12 rivalry. Oklahoma took down Nebraska last year, 23-16. to That game, a lot closer than some expected. Now Oklahoma does the return trip to Lincoln, but Scott Frost will not be on the sideline. Nebraska finally getting rid of him after the loss to Georgia Southern just last week. So what's going to happen? How will Nebraska play? Will they be motivated? Will they be down on themselves? So many factors are going to be playing into this game. Also, first true test for Brent Venables. They had two easy cupcake victories to start his tenure with the Sooners, now playing in a hostile environment with a perhaps pumped up Nebraska team and Nebraska crowd. You take a look at the personnel, guys. We start on offense, and we'll start with the road team in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, a lot of people question, what's going to happen to the Sooners? What's going to happen? Lincoln Riley, the offensive guru, he's gone. Caleb Williams is gone. What's going to happen to them? Well, they're just fine. And we knew they were going to be just fine. Brent Venables went out and hired Jeff Levy as his offensive coordinator, stealing him away from Ole Miss. And Levy has the Sooners rolling. Through two games, they're averaging just 39 points. I said just 39. It's pretty dang good. And they're also averaging 461 yards per game. Dylan Gabriel, the transfer quarterback from UCF, has been lighting up the defenses so far. 529 yards, five touchdowns, no interceptions so far for uh, Dylan Gabriel. 244 of those yards and two of those five touchdowns have gone to Marvin Mims. This Oklahoma team, guys, is electric. They haven't missed a beat since last season. They're fast, they're electric, and they can score in a hurry, and they can score really whenever they feel like it. That's how good this team is. And Gabriel and Levy, perfect duo, perfect offense for Oklahoma. You take a look at Nebraska. Uh, obviously, what, what major storyline for them coming into the offseason was the addition of Mark Whipple. Mark Whipple coming over from Pittsburgh to become the new offensive coordinator of the Cornhuskers. Uh, could he revolutionize the offense? Could he take him over? You throw in Casey Thompson, the transfer quarterback from Texas, and people thought Nebraska's offense was going to be pretty dang good. And the thing is, they have. Nebraska's offense has been pretty good. They're averaging 36 points per game through three games this season. They're averaging 492.3 yards per game. So nearly 500 yards per game so far. They're averaging over 200 rushing yards per game, along with nearly 300 passing yards per game at 288.7. Anthony Grant, the running back, has been phenomenal. 428 yards and five touchdowns. Casey Thompson, he's been mediocre. 866 yards, four touchdowns, and three interceptions, but... I think some would say definitely an upgrade in the passing game above the likes of like Adrian Martinez. So Nebraska guys, they're putting up the points. They have the ability to be explosive. Uh, we haven't seen much dual threat ability from Casey Thompson, not as much as I think I would have liked or expected during his time at Texas. But regardless, Mark Whipple has improved the offense. Nebraska's downfall this season has been the defense. You take a look at Nebraska's defense. The Cornhuskers averaging 492.3 yards per game offensively. The defense is allowing 492 yards per game. They're giving up nearly 500 yards per game. They're giving up over 284 passing yards per game, over 200 rushing yards per game. And look at the teams they've played, guys. I mean, they allowed 31 points to Northwestern in that season opener in Ireland. 
a Northwestern team that had one of the worst offenses in the country last year. Don't look that they've improved that drastically. This Northwestern team just got beat by Duke last week. 31 points, though, to the Wildcats. They allowed 17 points toward North Dakota, the FCS team that was tied with Nebraska in the third quarter. They allowed 45 points last week at home to Georgia Southern, including 642 yards of offense to the Eagles. So Clay Helton, kudos to you. Hats off to you. Leaving, I got fired from USC, goes to Georgia Southern. First year there, has about 2-0 with a win at Nebraska, putting up over 600 yards of offense. The, the defense guys for Nebraska is terrible. Ultimately has been their downfall. A lot of people thought they'd be relatively decent, been far from the case in 2022. In addition to all of that, guys, the Cornhuskers don't even have a pass rush. They have no pass rush. Just two sacks in three games. They have no push off the line of scrimmage. They're not pressuring opposing quarterbacks. They really aren't taking the ball away that much. This is a Nebraska team that is just lost defensively. And that's a problem. Because you look at Oklahoma, and well, they're not. I mean, guys, it's Brent Venables. It's the arguably best defensive mind in the entire game of college football, and he is your head coach. They're allowing just 96 rushing yards per game so far this season. The secondary is allowing 209.5 passing yards per game. And I will say that Nebraska will be obviously the best offense that Oklahoma has faced. Casey Thompson will be the best quarterback uh, that Oklahoma has faced. So these numbers might be a little bit skewed considering Oklahoma's played two cupcake opponents to start the year. Uh, but obviously, defensively, they do still own the edge over Nebraska. You take a look at Oklahoma a little bit deeper, too, where they're going to be some of their keys to the game. Uh, really, all they've got to do, Oklahoma, all they've got to do for Nebraska is stop the run. If they can shut down Anthony Grant, uh, if they can shut down uh, this Nebraska run game and keep Casey Thompson in the pocket, they're going to be fine. Again, assuming they're only giving up 96 rushing yards per game, I don't think they're going to allow you know, over 200 like Nebraska's been averaging. Uh, I don't have faith in Casey Thompson to deliver in crunch time. If this game is close in the fourth quarter, close down the stretch, I don't have faith in Casey Thompson being able to lead a game-winning drive or to put his team in a position to win the game. Factor in also that Oklahoma is quite the opposite in terms of pressure. Oklahoma has nine sacks in two games. Nebraska has allowed seven sacks so far this season. Uh, again, the Sooners, I think, are just more, they're bigger, they're, they're more physical, they're more aggressive, they're faster. Uh, and right now, certainly have a lot more to play for. It's the sixth ranked team in the country than the Cornhuskers, who at one and two, their season already done. So, what's going to happen in this game? What's going to happen on Saturday morning? Guys, I will say this. I'll tell you right now, we're picking Oklahoma, and to me, there's no doubt about it, right? I feel very confident in picking Oklahoma. They should win this game. It would be a massive upset if Nebraska won. But do keep in mind that sometimes firing a coach at midseason can fire up a team. Nebraska's hopes of you know winning a West crown, or, or really, that's kind of still intact. I don't have one conference loss, but not going to happen. But Nebraska's hopes of making a bowl game and stuff, it's, it's far from over. They're one and two. The season's still young. A win against Oklahoma could get them back on track. Firing a coach midseason sometimes fires up a team. Take, for example, TCU last year, just a, one of the many examples. You know, the Horned Frogs let go of Gary Patterson midseason the very next game. TCU upset Baylor 30-28. to Baylor a top-10 team, and that loss for Baylor ultimately keeping them out of the college football playoff. Would the Corn Frogs have won that game and Gary Patterson been there? We don't know, but probably not. Teams wake up. Sometimes these new interim coaches, they can recognize the potential that the previous coach wasn't doing. They change some things that the previous coach wouldn't have allowed, and maybe it transforms the entire team. The spread for this guy is relatively low. Was Nebraska like an 11-point underdog? You think about that. Fired your head coach. All these horrible things going on in your program, and you're only an 11-point underdog to the sixth-ranked team of the country. It's not too bad. This game, guys, I think will be a lot closer than people think. Oklahoma cannot take Nebraska lightly. No one can look at this game and go, oh, they fired Scott Frost. Oklahoma's going to kill them. I'm not under that impression at all. But ultimately, guys, Oklahoma is the better team. They're obviously better coached. They've got the better offense. They've got the better defense. The only thing they don't own here is home field advantage. And while it will be tough, while playing at Nebraska is never easy, Georgia Southern just won there. North Dakota was tied there at halftime. Oklahoma can power through and win this game. Maybe closer than they want, maybe closer than expected, but the Sooners will win. Back-to-back -back wins over the Cornhuskers in this old Big 12 rivalry. The Cornhuskers will drop to one and three. Again, two programs that right now heading in very, very different directions. 
So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below too, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country, guys, being at over 80% of the national analysts. Make sure to go check those out. Sign up for those today to become a part of the GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.